Let's build a realistic fine scale kit. Hello and welcome to my channel and welcome to Dubai Trains. And in this video, I'm going to explain how I built and painted this ITLA fine scale kit. I want to explain a lot of tips and tricks along the way and also some shortcuts because these fine scale kits can be very daunting when you see them in the store, but there are several complicated steps that you can skip along the way. So the first steps are to assemble the model and before you click away, there's a lot of tips right here I'm gonna give you to just start off on the right foot. So first, mark up everything, make sure that it can possibly fit. Then, second tip, don't use too much glue. As you see here, I'm using just a tiny amount of glue. You don't want it to seep out through the front because that's gonna ruin the model. So when you push these two pieces together, as you see, I push them together under an angle with the, fa the front facing downwards and then I push them together flat. So any excess glue that is there is automatically pushed out to the back of the model and not to the front. You also wanna make sure you do this on a very flat surface, just ensure everything is flat. And talking about a level perpendicular and square, just keep on measuring everything throughout the build to make sure it's all neatly aligned as you see here. That almost goes unnoticed, but these ITLA kits are made out of MDF and micro plywood. And this makes them much easier and more forgiving to assemble compared to, for example, the standard plastic kit when they often have a lot of flash or the plates are warped or they're not as sharp as they should be because the injection molds are worn out. And you just don't have these issues with laser cut MDF. And if for whatever reason you do assemble it a bit crooked, then there are ways to fix it. And here is one with pilasters. And pilasters are really a great design feature to really make the structure your own. And you can also hide crooked seams and nooks with it as well. Now do make sure when you add these pilasters that they're really level, straight, vertical, horizontal, whatever they have to be, because you definitely want to see that. And this is pretty much where you make the difference between a wonky looking model and a tight uh, model. So as you see, I'm really taking the time to correct myself because I thought it was vertical, but it was totally not vertical. Now for the corners, didn't make it easy on myself because I pre-glued the pilasters to their respective walls. For the right one on the image, you see it had to have a little overhang to overlap with the one on the left image. So when you put them together, it all fits nicely. But I'll get back to that later as that's going to bite me in the rear end. Now, assembly of the pilasters slowly, slowly get a little bit more complicated. At some point, you need to cut them to size to fit in between the other ones. So I easily do this just by marking them very precisely with an X-Acto knife, how long they have to be. And then I just cut them off with these shear pliers that I use to cut my rails with. And I found this is the fastest way and also the cleanest way to cut this material without having to sand and without creating splinters or anything like that. And the cool thing about this ITLA kit is you can create these vertical uh, pillars how you want them. You can stack different layers to create a different look. So that's what I'm doing right here. And as we're telling a story with our model, I chose to make the vertical pilasters, it's not the word, I think it's corniche maybe, the corniche on the very top of the building, different and bigger than the corniche halfway through the building. Now for the side walls, they are concrete, so I just basically turn the pilasters around to have this concrete look. And as you see to the right, you see the spacing is slowly increasing to have some extra force perspective. You see that here, I think it turned out really well. It looks like the street is a little bit longer than that actually is. So now we start looking at the workbench and to collect all the other pieces we should not forget. Always those chimneys, we always forget those pesky chimneys. Also about 25 or so window stills. And I actually cut the window sills a little bit, chopped some edges off there just to give this old age look of broken window sills as you see here in the final result. And now the most important step of this video is to like it and to subscribe if you have not done so already. <laughs> Thank you very much. So this is the point where I tell you I made it a little bit difficult on myself. I really wanted to pre-assemble all the, the walls in its entirety but there are three different colors on these walls. We have the gray stones in the bottom, then we have a little bit of these brick pilasters, and we have concrete. So that means we need to mask everything off once we spray them one by one. And you really need to mask well, and I cannot emphasize enough, take your time and mask well, because otherwise you're gonna have overspray. So as you see, it took uh, quite a lot of steps to get everything primed in the three different colors. 
And as vibrant as everything looks, we're going to now tone that down because this is not a realistic fine scale color. So this is the point in the video where I'm going to show you a lot of colors. I'm not going to call them all out. If you want to know which ones they are, just feel free to pause the video and take note of them. And this is one of the steps that you could skip. And that's the individual painting of the bricks. I'm going to actually do this again later on because they really became faded. Um, but this does really help to the overall result of a super nice realistic model. So don't skip it, but you can skip it if you want to. Now I noticed that some of the seams were actually quite visible. So one trick you can do um, is to fill them very gently and carefully, but fill them with matte medium. So I just got some matte medium on a brush and brush it into those seams. So then we mix more colors up to create a wash for the mortar. And do really take your time. You really want to plan the mortar a little bit, if that makes any sense. Again, this is a step you can skip. You can skip this mortar all entire, entirely altogether. You're not going to see it that much, but it's just an extra layer that will take the model to the next level if you want to challenge yourself. Now you can manipulate the mortar by adding just some plain water to areas to dissolve it a bit. You can take more off with the tissue and you can add more by adding a very strengthened wash to certain areas. And it, my goal is to create a bit of a flaky pattern because you don't want it to be all the same everywhere. This is how it turned out and I'm quite happy with the, the result. And then onto more colors and I'm basically going to give a little bit more depth and accent to this concrete on the side. And I'm gonna do that with a, a wet on wet technique where you first make everything wet and then you slowly add the colors. And I have a variety of three colors and I added here a little bit of a burnt sienna uh, just to liven it up a little bit and to create this pink reddish fade. And here you can really see the wet on wet in action where this color is just dissipated all over the surface. And the result is more or less the same as it was from the spray can. Again, you can skip this, but the subtle changes all add up to a great model. So don't skip too many steps. So then it's onto the stone foundation and I'm gonna repaint everything in a little bit different shade of gray. And you're wondering if I'm repainting everything, why do you prime it in the first place? Well, it's way easier to give a different accent to the stone or to the concrete when it's already in roughly the right color as you saw. If you have to paint bare MDF into this gray or into the stone color, you're gonna need a lot of layers and it's just gonna add a lot of uh, paint thickness to it and that's gonna make you lose a lot of the detail. So here we're just redoing the gray in a little bit different shade. Same, same, but different as we say over here. And then I paint individual bricks. So the key here is that you have a primer and then you, have, you choose one other color, that's this beige, that you use abundantly. I'm going to dry brush a little bit with uh, raw umber. And then you make three or four different variations that you use more sparingly. So in this case, I have a bit of more of an orangey clay color, a bluish tint, and a more yellow mustardy color. Now, once all that is done, I give a good dry brushing with just one of the darker shades. I think this is burnt umber, just to tie it all together and to add some accents. Initially, I wasn't that pleased with this ultra dirtiness around the doors, but you'll see later after the wash is applied that you don't see it that much, and I actually think it looks pretty good. Now it's time to tackle the bricks, and you see we're using the same colors as before, and that fiery, flamey orange, use that very sparingly. Now, as with the City Classics building that I did recently, I want to sponge all these bricks in a, a mix and a mash of these different colors, uh, making sure along the way that it doesn't become too uh, spotty, that everything is a little bit homogeneous. And I also don't want to take away too much of the, the mortar that we added earlier. So it's a very delicate process. And don't forget these small brick pilasters on these side walls as well. So then I repainted several bricks again, uh, because the, the effect just got lost with the mortar and the sponging. And now we're slowly getting into all the details. So I painted the windows blue. I had some choices there. I could either go for this matte blue or for a matte light green look. 
but I thought the uh, yeah the blue would just look nice. Both colors could work though because we have a little bit of blue in the stonework and a little bit of green in the stonework. So that would really complement and yeah make it tie in together if you reuse the same colors there. So after the base coat, I just sponge it first with a lighter gray to give it a little bit of a fade effect. And then with, I think it's Mississippi mud, brownish color, just to make it a bit more dirty. Now to finish off the bricks, I do a, a dry brush of this yellow antique gold. And that just really gives the bricks some extra depth, it seems. I can't explain why. It was the same with the City Classics building. It's just a great effect that adds yeah, depth to, to the building. Now, if you're looking at this, you're thinking, oh, this is so messy, then I agree with you, but just wait, because here is the wash, and we're gonna tie all that in together. So the wash is just a, a black wash, as you see, and again, this is a step, you need to take your time. That's a pro tip <laughs> when it comes to washes, is you really take your time in doing the wash. You, what I do is first you apply a base coat, and then just with some water, you can dilute it in certain areas, as you see here that I'm doing on the top, and down below, you can add just almost full strength paint to it to, to add extra grime. Now what this wash does is two other things. You see, it makes the, the concrete in this case, in my view, a bit more mature, it's less fresh, and it ties everything together because the wash is over the entire building. It ties the bricks together with the concrete and the concrete with stones, and also all the details that you apply a wash onto as well. It just ties everything together. And don't forget to wash any other parts that you might have. So in this case, the window sills, they also need to be nice and grimy. And talking about window sills, we need to install them. And that's really easy. First, we just push in the window casing from the back. As you see here, it should be completely flush with the back wall. So that's why I put it down again on the table because then you can ensure it's completely flat. And then you just take a window sill I zoom in a bit, it fits so snug, I have to really push it into place with a wash pin. Do use something soft and woody for this, like a wash pin, and don't use like a screwdriver or anything <laughs> like that, because you're just going to butcher uh, the windowsill, because keep in mind, it's just a small piece of MDF. And once the windows are in place, I add a little bit of, I think it was PVA glue, and I just stuck all the, the, the fake glass to the back of it. And this glass also holds the window casing in place. And when getting a fine scale kit, you often see a lot of different materials. And the next one is this very thin plywood. And because this is a model of a rickety shack and some doors, I like to paint this directly on the plywood without priming it. So you preserve the, yeah, the wood grain that's there that will add to the overall model. Now when painting something like this, you gotta get the end goal in mind. So in this case, it's going to be a old, originally white painted shack. So for that, you start with the undertone, that's a, a darker brown in this case, and then I lighten that up with a gray, a little, yeah, it's not really a wash, but it just adds gray sparingly here and there. It doesn't have to be even coat, it all just adds to the overall effect. And then I slowly start adding some white. And this is not a full on paint, and it's also not a dry brush, it will be somewhere in between and use a thin brush as you see here. So you can really try to get those um, separate panels and wood planks that are in the model. And at some point when you're painting, you just need to decide, I'm done. Because if you don't do that, you're gonna end up with a white piece of plywood. Now you could leave it right there, but of course we're gonna go the extra mile. And remember that blue of the window casings? I'm gonna let that come back. So I'm gonna add blue to my doors and this again is a mixture of painting and dry brushing. I would say it's painting with very little paint on an almost dry brush. And here's the end result of that shack once it's all glued together. And don't forget to do the other details as well. So it's time to assemble the main building and this is a quite straightforward process. Uh, the only tip I would have here is to use, again, very little glue. So I actually take this Gorilla Wood glue and I spray it on a separate piece of whatever and then I take a toothpick and I gently add it only in the locations that I want um, in, in, the, in the nooks, the crannies, and not on the top surfaces so the glue would more likely stay there. And grill glue and wood glue in general is very strong so you don't need a lot of glue. But if you're not confident about the strength of the model afterwards, you can always add, once this is dry and done, some glue from the inside to the entire corner. 
So use some masking tape just to keep it all in place. You can use clamps, but frankly, I don't have any clamps. So remember, this was going to bite me on the rear end. Well, you see it, these pilasters that I pre-glued and painted with the masking, they left a seam. Um, and the best way, best cheat I have to fix this seam is, as you see here, is to fill it very gently with matte medium. So that's what you're seeing here. The matte medium does shrink, so you probably have to do this once or twice. Another way to prevent this is to uh, paint those pilasters separately and then now in the assembly stage that I would glue them on because you can glue them on a bit more tight. But again, you'll see in a minute this uh, matte medium trick also really does it well. For the roof, I use my newly invented method of spray painting the roof just with black and then immediately once you put the can down is to grab a handful of sand and spray it or sprinkle it over the roof and to let that dry a little bit and the sand will add texture. And the sand is not black, so then you're going to want to paint it again with the spray can to get black. Now I use a wet and wet technique to uh, add some accents to the roof, some gray, some black, um, some rusty color there as well. And do use a lot of paint because once it all dries, you're not going to see a lot of it. And sometimes this is just the best part when everything just fits. That's satisfaction right there. So we glue that into place and then it's onto the details. We have those doors. Again, use a tiny bit of matte medium. It's all gonna dry completely transparent and matte, so don't worry about it. But that's not an excuse for using too much matte medium. And boy, look at all those details. It really makes it worthwhile and it really tells the story of what happened here with this building. Now, of course, this model needs some more weathering, but we'll do that in a later step. Now it's time for the great reveal. And before I show you, try to notice the first thing that your eye is drawn to. Did you see it? I saw it, Pew! it went straight to the door. And then I saw the rest of this beautiful building as your eye just wanders through the scene. And I'm really happy how this turned out. There's so many details. Let me just go through a few of them. The spots I really like, like this brick insert here. I really like that, how that turned out. And these, these separate uh, painted bricks here and there that just really break this, especially here as well, they really break this, this stagnant, you know, continuity of bricks. And here I left the wash on a bit more on purpose. You can really see how that creates some distance, a bit of a black spot there. And that's nice. It's lighter over here. That's nice. A little bit lighter over there, a bit fresher. That's nice. Don't want everything to be super grimy and dingy. Then the window sills, I really like that some of them, like that one, and those are really obviously different and crooked. And I only did that in the bottom window sills. Because remember the story we're trying to tell, uh, as I explained in different videos, is that this top layer was added later. So these window sills are still relatively fresh and, uh, and square, as these bottom ones here are just all a bit yeah, rickety and cut open. The stonework, it almost looks 3D. It only looks, it's, it's just crazy. When you see it, it, you just want to touch it. It looks like it's 3D. And actually there is a lot of relief in there, but the painting just enhances and gives so much more depth in these stones. Definitely worth the extra mile. And you see this extra grime I put with these windows or um, the doors are, sorry, loading bays and the door there. It, it worked out quite well after the wash. And here on the right, we have the concrete wall with the pilasters with the narrowing, tightening, spacing in between them. I really like how that adds to the depth. I just added this picture in, in the background just to give an idea how it, yeah, it helps to flow and it becomes a bit messy and squingy and that's the image as well. It flows better through the image. Uh, I can move it maybe a bit to the left, but then now it's a bit stuck somehow. So you can move that around try to find the right composition for you. Have more or less of that building on there. See, so to put it like that would also be nice. Of course, the perspective is a little bit off. Of course, it's not the same perspective, but that's, like I said, we're working on that. But yeah, that looks amazing. Um, a lot of the details, yeah, this detailing here, that blue, I really like that. It ties in well, it doesn't stand out, and it's a nice, obvious thing to see. Um, and some of the details like these on top are actually not glued yet. Let me just show you how this turned out. Nice door. So I even put some rust on the hinges on the left with the doorknob, keyhole. Look at that. I'm really happy with how that turned out. Um, 
But as I was saying, this is just the foundation. This is just the main kit. And I have so many more details. We have the emergency fire escape that's supposed to go here. We have a very elaborate ducting system on the entire um, yeah, facade and the side as well. And then we have loads of more extra details and posters and electrical boxes and gas boxes, and fire hydrant stuff that all have to be added on this. So I'm gonna add those on in separate videos just to zoom in a bit on these different uh, the details and how you can add them to your building. And if there's anything you want to see specifically from those videos, like more into the brush techniques or different color matching or something like that, do let me know in the comments down below and I'll be sure to try to include them. Thank you guys all for watching. Don't forget to like the video and see you next time. Bye bye.